What's up, AAU family? You are now listening to Meeting at the Rim with Dale Potter. Welcome to another episode of Meeting at the Rim, broadcasting from the AAU National Headquarters here in Lake Buena Vista. I'm your host, Del Potter. This is going to be a great show today for many of the youth basketball coaches across the country and athletes wanting to know what does a college coach look for when they are at an AAU tournament and what is talked about when a college coach is meeting you in person trying to recruit you to their program. Skill development from the physical and also mental part of the game is discussed with my next guest. He's led his University of Virginia men's Cavaliers to back-to-back ACC regular season championships, back-to-back ACC coach of the year. Please welcome to the show, head coach Tony Bennett. Hey, Coach Bennett. Hey, Dale. How are you doing? Good, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. I know you're busy. <laughs> no, that's all right. I, like I said, it's, uh, um, they just kind of lined me up with something. I was reading kind of what this is about, so it sounds like you guys are trying to help the game out, and you got a lot of, you got a big audience, that's for sure, so anything I can do to help you out. Great. I know you're getting the guys ready for Morgan State on November 13th. Coach, is it ever a challenge maintaining the energy level regardless of who's on the schedule? Um, no, I think, you know, first you, you, you know, I always tell our guys, um, one of, we have some, we call them pillars in our program and there's five of them, but one of them is passion and kind of what that means is, you know, we talk about do not be lukewarm. You, you, you gotta, you gotta have a passion for what you do each day. And, and with that one is it, it means, do you love what you do? You know, whenever you watch great musicians, great performers, great athletes, anything, you just think they're captivated in what they do. Um, they're true. They truly are. And I think that, that, that is a component. If, if you don't enjoy this, then you're probably doing the wrong stuff. But the other side of that to me with passion is, you know, it takes a tremendous amount of, you know, uh, grit. That's people are using that word a lot. Discipline, stick to itiveness. I think that's what coach pop calls it with their team, but, um, the ability to just work and, and, you know, you, you stay committed to the task at hand for that day, how you get the extra shots, you work with great intensity. Um, and so I think when you combine a love of what you do and you have that each day, you're going after it. I think those things take care of themselves. And, you know, that's why also, you know, the opportunity to play the, the game is such a beautiful game. You play, you know, there's such good teams at this level. So it's, there's an excitement in our opening game and, you know, the rest of the way through, you're always preparing for something. Coach, I know the summers are very important for you and your program when it comes to recruiting. And when you're at an AAU tournament evaluating the perspective of student athletes, what are some of the skill components you look for that will have an impact for your basketball program? Yeah, you know, I really like, um, well, you're, you're always, it's similar to the NBA, you always look for those, you know, something guys can do that. Maybe that they're, I'm going to give you kind of both answers and they're going to sound contradictory, but. First one, if they have a, a real elite gift or talent, you know, whether they shoot the ball or they're just a terrific athlete or, wow, what a passer, what a, it could be, what a physical player. He just plays so hard, he's so physical. So you look for one of those things that, boy, that's a special gift that they have. So you look for that. Um, but I really like completeness. You know, when I look at players, I like it when they're skilled, when they're, they're fundamentally sound. They can, you know, dribble, pass, and shoot. Um, they... They just they have an awareness of how to play. There's just a, a level of um, completeness in their skill set, and, and they know how to play the game because watching younger players, knowing that when you come to, whether you go from junior high to high school or then high school to college, um, even college into the, the professional level, there's just a big jump. But people who are sound in their thinking, who know how to fit and play the game with others, um, both offensively and defensively, those things translate. I guess that field part or that they're just they make the extra pass or they know when to be aggressive, when to get others involved. They know how to just talk and treat people. So I think you're, you're looking at all those things. Of course, that special gift or two, that their strengths that they have, and then you, you look for completeness as a 
on in their skills. Um, you don't want any big holes, you know, in their game. But but then that can they play with others and just impact the game for whatever's needed. And I know you and your staff have a watch list of guys that you are looking at. Have you ever been at one of our AU tournaments and there was a player who maybe wasn't on your watch list that surprised you and grabbed your attention? Absolutely. That that I would say more than half of our recruiting is that way. I, I can't you know, you're just you're there, you're to watch a kid. I, I'll tell you a funny story about that and I'm gonna go way back, so hopefully you got some older people <laughs> listening or looking at this interview, but my dad went to my dad was the head coach at Stevens Point, tiny division three school or NAI school in, in Wisconsin and he took my mom with him and he was there to watch this player and my mom pokes him on the shoulder and said, Hey, who's that guy on the other team? He really he looks good in warm ups, you know, and, and the game started. You should look at him and it, it was Terry Porter. Okay. So Terry Porter is a seventeen year NBA vet, was an all star, played with Clyde and all those guys, uh, you know, when um Portland the Trailblazers are great, but but it's it happens. That happens with us. You'll go and watch someone. It's Malcolm Brogdon. I'll use an example of a guy we have right now in our program. Malcolm Brogdon, two-time All-ACC guard, All-American last year. You know, I'm at the Peach Jam watching, uh, or I, you know, I actually went down to the AAU Nationals in Orlando at the World Wide Sports, and I'm watching, and all of a sudden, he just jumped off the page. I'm like, who is this guy? I'm looking through my book. i I, I got to follow this guy, and absolutely, that happens with so many players. So for young players to understand um Absolutely, you're being valued all the time, but that's that's a lot of the ways that we do our recruiting because it's you know paper's one thing, but when you're watching in person and seeing real stuff, that that's the that's the eye test. When you're when you're watching these guys and having student athletes come to your program, I know you get a good evaluation on what they can do and what they can't do. Is there one aspect of basketball development? that stands out in today's youth that you feel is missing? Oh, that's, you know, everybody always talks about, you know, the ability to shoot, you know, like they'll say, well, you know, you look at sometimes their players are playing too many games and they don't focus on their skill development. They don't shoot it. They don't have the fundamental skills, but I, I don't know. I think the playing part is very important. I just think they can't be, it's like anything. It can't be, all playing and no skill work. It can't be all skill work and no playing, but I think there is, you know, being 40, mid forties now, 46, well, there wasn't as quite as much playing in summer. So I just honed my skills and, you know, kind of, we talk about owning your skills. Like I worked so hard so that, you know, I really, I really could shoot the ball. I could handle it. Like that was done um, in a way that um, was really strong. So I, I think sometimes, that there's so many interests, so many things to have, but there's no substitute for paying the price on developing. Uh, again, you know, I, I say I go to shooting because that seems like it can be a lost art, but just whatever that is, just fundamentally sound players. So, you know, I think guys are so gifted now. They're so athletic. Uh, they've got stronger. Um, they can make amazing plays, um, but but there's probably not quite as sound of a player nowadays. I think just they're more gifted in a lot of ways, but I think that's an area. And it's like, how do you work at that? Well, there's, there, you work at it, you practice it, you, you develop those skills, you learn how to play. So I, I think that would be an area. I think that, you know, young players should constantly be aware of, and there are some that are, but I think that's what sets people apart. What advice can you give the youth coaches that coach in our AAU tournaments that are trying to prepare their kids for that next level of competition at the collegiate level? Yeah, I think first teaching them how to play hard. Um, you know, nothing will turn off a, a coach more when they watch guys that don't know how to compete and play hard. Um, and then in playing hard with that, to me, and I'm going to talk comes an attitude, a good attitude. You know, you you want to turn people off, be don't play hard and kind of have a a sulking attitude. When those things are present, that's a hard one for coaches to get over. So uh, I think coaches do a great job of this for the most part, but but getting guys to really play hard, compete, and then have the right kind of attitude. You know, this will sound funny to you, Dell, but um, I, I a lot of times love watching or enjoy. It's important to see players who are recruiting when they're going through some adversity. They're either not playing well, their team's getting smacked in a game. I study them closely then when 
they get some bad foul calls on them. I'll watch them closely. And I'll say, okay, how are they going to handle this? I even try to watch sometimes their parents, too, and say, all right, how, how will they handle these things? Because it's inevitable you're going to go through that stuff when you're, you have players. So how they deal with adversity. We, we use a saying, again, my father was a, a longtime coach, and, and he always says, you have to have players you can lose with first before you win. And I know that sounds funny, but the truth of the matter is, is i got to know if, it's, if we're going to lose or we're going to go through adversity that, that player, he'll stay with it. He's got the right attitude, and he'll eventually grow from those experiences and get really good. So I think that intangible of the attitude, um, handling adversity, well, that's significant. So I'd, I'd say that the effort and handling those things um, with the attitude are huge for coaches. But then, you know, obviously the, the physical side of it, the basketball side, I mean, understanding, you know, just, again, being a sound player, um, being, you know, being able to do some things – having strength, developing those guys, but the coaches can develop soundness, how to, you know, catch and pass. Some of the simple things that you grow up that sometimes can be lacking. And then, um, you know, obviously, you know, seeing people you know, being able to just be creative and make plays and all that. I think most of the coaches do a good job, but it's, it's a challenge when you bring players together that haven't been practicing all year. You're, you know, you're, you're bringing guys together. So those are some of the challenges with some of the things I think can help, um, you know, some of the AU coaches. Coach, you guys play a tough schedule, and in, in, in ACC, every single game, it's it's a dogfight. With all the variables that don't get accounted for for a team during the season, how are you able to keep your student-athletes engaged in team goals while they manage schoolwork and possible influence from family and friends? <laughs> yeah, no, I think time management is huge. Um and it's a new era, you know, with social media, um, Facebook, Twitter, all whatever. There's probably three new things that I don't even heard of. But, um, but that, you know, just being there's a I don't even know who said it, but it, it's it's a it's a saying that says the art of doing what you are doing. There's a true art in being, you know, really focused on what are you doing. You're you're single focused and you're not you're not drawn to and from and just you know you're. Uh, look, I'm I'm working on my studies right now. I'm not going to be distracted from that. I I've got to be disciplined in you know my practices and how I take care of my body and getting enough sleep and and engaged in that. And then you know, kind of this idea of there's nothing. Most of us aren't going to accomplish greatness individually. You know, there's there's the Muhammad Ali's you talk about. You know, there's there's a few the LeBron. There's some guys that are so gifted. They don't. I mean, they, even those people need others but most of us are going to touch a level of excellence or quality when we're, we're doing it with others. And, you know, you want to really, I feel like I'm giving you all these cliches, but the things that are important is, is if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. You have to be able to understand, I need the supports of my teammates, my coaches, uh, those people are helping me along the way. And I've got to be disciplined enough to, to grow from those situations, learn from those people. So, you know, you part of it's a discipline to stay engaged, to go back to your original question and mm-hmm. not just lose sight. And, and even when it doesn't always appear to be going so well, you just keep plowing through it. That has to do with that passion um, and you, you don't quit. But but I think it's a, a lot of things because uh, everybody's, you know, there's, it's, it's an instant gratification society and there's so many things buying for our young people's attention and those that can kind of block out a lot of distractions and just be true to what they're doing. I usually find a level of success in that. You know, here in the office, I always write down a quote every day, and Robert Greene is a, a author who I believe is my favorite author. Uh, he has a lot of good information on self-development, and there's a quote by Napoleon Bonaparte, a famous war general, and he says the moral is to the physical as three to one, meaning that any kind of adversity you may go through, the mentality, the energy you bring to that situation can make you overcome any kind of obstacle. So that's something I really, really uh, embrace throughout the workday and in life. <laughs> that's great. Can you repeat that quote? It, it broke up. You said something that something is to the physical street is one. You say the mental or the say that again. The moral is to the physical as three to one. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. That's bon- You said that's Napoleon. Yeah, Napoleon Bonaparte. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I think he was the guy that stood and put his hand in his, I go back to my 
social studies history days and they have pictures of him, he always has his hand inside of his jacket or his coat when right. he's showing him. So. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, Justin Anderson, a guy, former student athlete of yours, who played in our AU tournaments with the prestigious Boo Williams Club in Virginia, picked 21st overall yes. to the Dallas Mavericks. And also, Clay Thompson, a lot, of, a lot of listeners may not have known that you coached Clay at Washington State. He's considered one of the best two-way players in the NBA right now, fresh off a championship with the Golden yeah. State Warriors. How rewarding is it when you see one of your former student athletes get drafted to the NBA? Oh, it's, there's nothing better than seeing the young men that you coach achieve their dreams and have success. You know, they're, they're part of your family. You're, I, it's just you're so proud of, of them and what they do. So to see, you know, Justin reach that dream. We had two guys, Darren Atkins got a partial guarantee with the Knicks, you know, whether he makes their, their, their NBA team or plays in the D league, he did that He and Joe Harris do that. Um, you know, I've gotten a, guys that I've coached. It's just Aaron Baines. Um, that, that is one of the most rewarding things. And even, even seeing guys that play overseas or just all of a sudden they, they get a good job as a teacher or they meet the love of their life and they get married and have kids. When you see people, um, you know, get it, find a dream. Again, when you talk about sayings, I'll keep coming at you the one, but this is a proverb that says a desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. And, you know, when you see someone achieve, you know, whatever, win a championship, get drafted, um, have children, get a position, a job, it, it, it really is sweet to the soul. And, and that, you know, those who are part of their support group rejoice with them when those things happen. So that's one of the greatest gifts a coach can have when they see their their players um, have a level or a degree of success. I just love that. Okay, Coach, I'm going to give you a scenario. All right, you've been watching me at these AAU tournaments. You're interested in having me come to play for you at the University of Virginia. You're in my living room with either my guardian, my parents. What are some of the key points you discuss with us about the university and basketball program to entice me to come to your school? Yeah, I think one of the reasons I took the job at Virginia um, is because I really believe in what this university stands for. I think it's, it's really the best of all worlds. Um, you can compete on, to me, the biggest stage in, in college basketball in the ACC. I mean, the teams you play against, uh, the players, the coaches, the fan excitement, uh, it's, it's absolutely, um, it's, it's just elite. So you have the, the basketball aspect. And then, you know, a school like Virginia, you have the academic, we're the second or third ranked public school in America. Uh, it's so special academically. And, you know, I, I always tell players when you make a decision, you know, you want to be able to, you know, have the basketball sports side of it, all that entails. You want to be able then to have the academic side, and then there's a, a relational side, the, the relationship you're going to build with your teammates, with those coaches, with the professors, with the student body. Um, that's what's really important. And you know, I say you can have it all. I think in all those areas, that's where I, I believe we've created a culture, and we're at a place that is so special, uh, Virginia. And certainly, there's there's other schools like that. But um, I think that's really important that you don't say it's only about this and. Funny, you know, you talked about this, and so did I. You know, you can be anywhere when it's going great, and you're the big man on campus, and you're scoring, you know, twenty points a game. But, but where could you, where would you want to be when either you're battling through an injury, or you're, it's just not going well for you. You know, you had a hard day, or the basketball side of it struggling a little bit. You know, sometimes you should make a decision based on, okay, what school, what people would I be want around, want to be around when it's not going so well, because inevitably that's like wherever you choose, you're going to go through those valleys. And that's sometimes a position to say, all right, I wonder, you better like the, the players you're with, your, your teammates, you better know that the coaching staff believes in you, you better understand that the academic degree you're getting is going to help you and set you up for life after basketball, you're going to be performing the network. So I think those things are important for any young person to think about when they go to school. And of course, for Virginia, I think they're great, but I, I think that's an important thing for for anybody to really understand. Coach, that sounds good. You know, I play in the men's league here with a couple of coworkers, and last week, Monday, I had 25 points, believe it or not. I was hot. And I, <laughs> and I, I know that... Did you get any eligibility left or not? I was going to say that. I know I don't have any more, but maybe I could come down there and catch and shoot for you <laughs> just a little bit. 
<laughs> a coach, we'll get you open. Hey, Clay Thompson, man, you get, might be the next play. <laughs> yeah, right. Coach, your pack line defensive strategy that you utilize during games, it was created by your dad, Dick Bennett, and has been very successful for your program at Virginia. What's the process like for incoming players learning that style of defense where they may be used to denying the ball and gambling on steals? Yeah, well, you've done your homework. You know our stuff. I just think it's discipline. I think it's repetition. And, um, you know, I think it, there's a little bit of adjustment, but not too much. It's just about playing. It's a pretty simple, simple defense, simple concepts, but it's just about, you know, you can do it. And then to understand it, to learn to be, be like – how to anticipate, how to become continuous. That's the hardest thing for any high school player coming to college. Like, you know, you don't, you know, how you got to work off the ball defensively. No matter what your system you're going into defensively, there's just a, a level of intensity, physicality. Uh, we talk about being continuous that younger players don't always understand. Like, I can't rest. All of a sudden, okay, I'm on the ball. I know I got to be good. Now, all of a sudden, the ball goes away and I whoo, take a breath. Well, that's when you're getting nailed by a screen or a guy's cutting in front of you and, the ability to be, you know, constantly thinking, stance, position, all those things, they, they, uh, they're there. And then you're going to have to learn different ways to, um, to do stuff. That's, that's always the case, but it's a, it's a process, but you know, if, if your mind is sound and you've been disciplined enough, you're, I think you're going to be okay. Coach, thank you so much for coming on the show. I know you're very busy getting ready as I mentioned for uh, Morgan state for the listeners, please follow Men's Basketball University of Virginia at UVA Men's Hoops at Virginia Sports. Please follow AAU Basketball at AAU underscore basketball and myself, Del Potter at Del P A A U. Coach, a lot of coaches and parents will really, really benefit for the information you have given us. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks for having me on, Del, and have a great day. You too. Take care.